So, now we've learned a little bit about the moon, goddess, and her three faces or phases known as the maiden, the mother, and the crown. This segment of our show is about the gods and goddesses and whether there is only one source of divine energy or if the gods and goddesses are individuals. The answer is that I don't have the answer. <laughs> Sorry! Okay. I have the answer for myself and for my own heart, but not for anyone else at all. Today, I'm going to give you a little bit of information so you can begin to think about what feels right for you. We're going to start with pantheons. Do you know what a pantheon is? Well, first of all, it's an ancient temple in Rome built more than 1800 years ago. Actually, this building is called the Pantheon, but that's not what we're going to talk about today. A Pantheon is a group of gods of a certain mythology. Mythology? But what's a mythology? The most common definition of a mythology is a set of stories, traditions, or beliefs about a particular group. When most people talk about myths, they're talking about stories that were made up to make a point or to entertain. Let's say, okay, just for just a moment, that you went roller skating a month ago and something strange happened. Maybe a girl slipped a little bit when she was skating. She didn't fall all the way down, but when it looked like she was going to fall down, a boy who was standing on the sidelines and not skating saw her falling and he laughed at her. Okay. And then, when the girl was flailing all about, trying to get her balance back and still going forward, because she's on roller skates, then she bumped into another girl who was standing by the rail. And the second girl spilled some soda she was holding. Okay? Oh, you can see that happening, can't you? Then the boy who was laughing at the girl who was almost falling down, slipped on the soda the second girl spilled, and he fell down. Okay, so now let's say this happened, all this happened at this roller skating, and when you went home from skating, you told your little brother about it. A week later, he told a friend about it, and two weeks later, a friend of yours told you what happened. Okay, but when your friend told you about it, he got some of the things wrong about the story. In the story your friend tells you, let's say, it's another girl who falls down instead of a boy who slipped on the soda. Okay? And maybe he says the girl who spilled something had a milkshake instead of a soda. Or maybe even the girl who spilled it threw it at the boy instead. You may, you may hear me say things like everybody's different and everybody does things differently all the time. But that's to make sure you understand that there are different ways of doing things that I'm teaching you and, and that being different or having things different than you're used to is okay. And the truth of the matter is that everybody really, really does see and hear and understand things quite differently for a whole lot of reasons, and that's okay. But you can see how easily a simple story that we were just talking about in your roller skating rink can change because two different people are telling the same story. You, you have the internet, television, newspaper, science, and books to help you find out all kinds of things. It wasn't always this way. I'm sure you know that. Not so very long ago, the only way people found out about what was going around them was because someone told them, or they got a letter, um, but that didn't happen so very, long, so, so very much so long ago. The word myth is a Greek word, and originally meant speech or discourse, which is kind of like a conversation. But it changed over the years, as language always does, and so many things do, now it means fable or legend, and those words mean that the story being told is no longer true. It's just a story, or maybe a fairy tale. So these days, when people talk about uh, mythology, what they're mostly saying is that they're telling stories that are imaginary or made up, either to teach, either to teach a lesson or to entertain. Now, I will tell you, I wasn't there when the stories you hear about myths were made, so I can't tell you exactly what happened. But I want you to think about the possibility, okay, the possibility that the myths have been handed down through the years that might be real stories about real people, real events, places, and real gods. Because everyone hears and tells story differently, some of them, some of them may have been made to sound more exciting. 
Okay? Some people are just better storytellers. Some people don't remember details. Lots of different things happen. Or sometimes they're told from different points of view. But it might just be, it might, that some of the myths you hear as you grow older really did happen and that the original stories were simply forgotten or retold so many different times in so many different ways, just like about the story that, about what happened uh, in that roller skating rink a few minutes ago, that today we will never know for sure what happened. So that doesn't mean, though, that the stories are any less real than the stories that are being written today in the newspapers, on the internet. You don't know for sure. Mythology, though, is important in our show today because these stories are, are really the only way we have of learning about the gods that we know or serve today, other than maybe our own personal experiences. When the world of people was very young, there were many different kinds of people all over the world who did things in different ways. Each different way of doing things was called a culture. We have different kinds of cultures in our world today, but not so long ago, the people didn't have computers and televisions we have, so the only way they could learn about each other was to travel or to listen to stories of other people who did travel. The people in, in all different lands had all kinds of different gods that they prayed to or served or worshipped. The people in China, for example, had different gods than the people in Ireland. And the people in South America had different gods than the people in Africa did. And the different groups of gods are called pantheons. And let me tell you, there are a lot of them. African, Australian, Aztec, Baltic, Caribbean, Celtic, Chinese, Egyptian, Finnish, Greek, Incan, Indian, Japanese, Mayan, Mesopotamian, Middle Eastern, Native American, Norse, Oceanic, Roman, Slavic, South American, Southeast Asia, and Tibetan gods, not to mention the saints and gods of the Christian pantheon, too. Do you see what I mean? Lots and lots and lots of gods and goddesses. Now, some people believe that no matter how many gods and goddesses there are, that they all lead back to one divine male kind of energy and one divine female kind of energy, and that each of the gods and goddesses are merely facets or pieces of those two kinds of energy. The way this thought process is explained is to think of a diamond. It's possible that you've never seen a real diamond in your life, so here's a couple of pictures that will help you to understand. Each of these diamonds look like they've been cut into sections, but they aren't. They just look that way. If you chip a diamond, you still know it's a diamond because of the unique material it's made of. And if the diamond is big enough and you look into it, you'll see many reflections of your own face in it. And if you think of each of those sections as being one of the many faces of the many gods throughout the world, then you can understand why some people say that all gods are just one face of the one divine male kind of energy and that all the goddesses are just one face of the one female kind of energy and that there's really only one god and one goddess. Some even say that those two really come from one source of ultimate or all-powerful energy. You might agree with this thought process and you might even point out that every man in the world is simply another face of the human male and that every woman in the world is simply another face of the female human. That makes sense, right? Other people say, no, that each god and goddess is a separate entity or has a different kind of energy from each of the others. You might agree with this thought process and point out that no matter if you are a girl or a boy, that nobody else in the world is exactly like you and nobody else in the world has the same energy signature that you do. And so 
the same is probably true for each of the gods and the goddesses. And if we remember that everything is made up of energy, do you think that the gods and goddesses are made up of a different kind of energy than humans are? What do you think? You'll have to think about that, won't you? So, now we've learned what pantheons are, and I've introduced you to some new gods and maybe some new things to think about. Which way do you think is right? And why do you think that? We'd love to hear your thoughts. But do remember that just because you believe one way doesn't mean that everyone agrees with you. So keep your eyes and your mind open and understand that all knowledge is worth having.